Hello everyone and welcome back and my oh my do I have a list for you today if you are a mid-range kind of synergy combo player to an extent it's not a full combo deck but the way it feels sometimes when the triggers are going on the stack it feels incredibly good and this is honestly the best that Golgari has felt for me playing it in a very long time and the primary focus is around two cards being Iridescent Vine last year, as we all know this card from the Lizards aggro deck that was very good before the other mono red deck just made it look irrelevant. But this has landfall. Whenever a land you control enters, this creature deals one damage to target opponent. And this synergizes incredibly well with the free strider lookout. This has whenever you commit a crime, as Vine last year will target our opponent on land ETB. So this will then trigger itself whenever you commit a crime look at the top five cards in your library you may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order this ability only triggers once each turn if you've been waiting to see this card pop off today's video is for you we make the land situation between ourselves and our opponent so different so vast it's not even funny or comparable so it's super cool other than that we have some really cool cards in here outside of what i'll go over very quickly let me slide that little spicy boy down but we are kind of following typical golgari standards where we have cut downs as two of i played one copy disfigure instead of the third cut down to kind of act as like a mitigator for the mono red deck it's obviously that's very good we have two duresses in here to take the best spells and oftentimes against like blue white hottie gem piles we could take their helping hands and things like that the rest being very, very good right now. Anoint with Affliction coming in as a two of. We trim down on the go for the throat to have these anoints in along with a fourth copy of cut down. As I think anoint is very good right now. Other than that, we have three go for the throats. We have the four Moss with Dread Knights. Obviously the kind of best in class two mana creature that we can be playing in a Golgari pile. We have two Lilianas for the matchups. It's good in two Sentinels to be the big beefy blocker and also maps. The other cool thing about maps is it's just target uh i guess this is only target creature there's another token you can target your opponent's stuff but this you can the maps can only target your own so i guess i was a little wrong about that i think at one point i might have said something about it but regardless comes in gets us more lands or just gets really big and it has vigilance so like a thing like split up for example if we attack with the free striders and a sentinel we have an untapped creature and tap creatures so they have to kind of decide one glissa to be kind of a bullet card along with a couple of other cards in our deck being the ghost vacuum ghost vacuum is very important ish in the deck because it is a free crime committer on our opponent's turn for zero mana if we just activate an exile a target card from a graveyard with the free strider lookouts so that gives us a lot of value there especially if we have that in a vine lasher in play as you will see throughout the game says this kind of synergy actually adds up but also the bottom ability sacrifice it put each creature card exiled with it onto the battlefield under your control with a flying counter on it each of them is a one one spirit in addition to its other types activate only as a sorcery there is a point and i messed this card up because i have not played with it before so please be patient if you spot it right away but eventually i spot a really cool play that we get to do with it because eh. but outside of that we have meat hook massacre number two they really made sure this card was worse, I promise you. But whenever it enters player sacrifice X creatures, we make a ton of mana. It looks expensive and it looks kind of hard to pull off. But when you look at some of our turns and counter mana, you'll realize that this is actually a pretty decent card whenever we top deck it in the late game. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three life. If you do, return that card under our control with a finality counter on it. Whenever a creature an opponent controls die, they may pay three life if they do not we re we get to return that card to the battlefield with a finality counter on it so this card is really for those kind of attraction decks or their valgaroth decks that we can kind of sure they kind of bring them in very quickly but they find really they find themselves in a really bad time if we play a meat hook massacre number two and then we can bring back obviously our important creatures that we need to like find last year's in free stride lookouts when it comes to that Virtue in here along with the Harvester. Virtue being very easy to cast in this deck because we ramp so aggressively and it actually has seven mana. It comes up very often on turn five potentially. But other than that, we're going to go ahead and dive into the games. If you all enjoy, please consider subscribing. Truly helps out the channel a ton. And let's just dive right into the games. We are big stand boys today apparently because I'm in the mood to stand. So, oh, we're going to keep this. Uh, we got the rest turn one cut down on the back end Mosswood and four mana. 
So seems good. Fire out this arrest, find out what we're up against right away. Huh. Yeah, I'll get rid of that one. Cut down pretty bad. We do have an artifact in our deck that's pretty good for this, so we definitely need to find it. Drawing is not the way to win this game, it is just being aggressive. Why they take time to do moment of truce and stuff like that, where you take our chances of firing in combat. Move in. That moment of truth held up here, so they could have absolutely nothing going on, or they could have everything. Black? I remember how these decks are. Black is the primary uh, function. Put it together and just never remember. We do have anoints in our deck, which are nice to exile. Main thing we want is them not to put a thing in the graveyard. All right, a land in there is good, but they put a land in hand as well, huh? Or we knew about that. Never mind. We don't get to see what they put in hand. Die balls are slow. Hotties in, in, but it's a 2 4, so it dodges our cut down. We don't really have a way to get that up, huh? Tough days. Tough days ahead. But I mean, we take the, we take the attacks. You take it. I don't want to play fountain port and make a dude. Eh, probably best. A land draw here is pretty tough. I think we have pretty good odds in this match, especially if that was a one for her. I mean, beggars can't really be choosers here. One mana. Yep. The reason they didn't really budge. The reason we opt for the restless cottage, by the way, is because we can activate it while holding up a black mana for cut. No. Another land going to yard. Although cut down is going to hit nothing like ever. The only card it can hit is like the other fairy that's a 1-3 that they use to put cards in their graveyard. Sure. And then our cottage can attack. We have three. We can really get him to two here. We could technically shrink this with like a disfigure and make it a 2-2 two -two or something. But they probably have counter spell. They attack, okay. So they have a bounce spell, I imagine. Blood a non-land permanent? I believe it is. Isn't this tapped? They're dead. They just died. Why did you... what you call paid actor cool game cool game moving on to the next really cool hand we got a lot of stuff our entire hand is castable so uh sure definitely gonna set this vine last year and play on turn one could kick it but i don't think it's necessarily that worth right now we got a lot of removal we're probably gonna have to use yeah there they are my my king we have a lot of removal that just exile straight up. So we just, we just wait. Honestly, they're not blocking either. I don't think. Yeah, there's no way. I'm the aggressor now. It's me. And they won't die. Okay, cool. So I do one of two things here. I could just go for the third test now and just take the one, I guess. Yeah, I'm down with that. This is just an activate. Yeah. Sweet. Uh huh. So this is good, but I want to play it next turn. One ping upstairs. Vacuum. Attack. I'm just going to activate this now so it doesn't pause me every four seconds. We have a really low card count in hand. That's the scariest thing. Getting something like a Sentinel in hand would be great. And this attack kind of to me implies that they only kind of have one thing left going for them. Resolves. Here. 
Because this won't die now. So if they try to pump it. Oh no, Red, where are you going? Uh, I'm back. Hmm. The rest turn one or to play a cottage turn one. But I would like to hold the surveil land until we know more information. But I'd also like to have my removal up in case the rest is kind of bad. I guess we'll find out if they ley line me. We'll keep. Right click for more information. Yeah, we'll play the cottage. I'd much rather hold up the removal. Play the surveil land now. It's some form of blue red variation. Maybe it's just guy control. Maybe it's synthesizer beat me up. We're in trouble. Okay. Um. This is good. This is a really good card. These are annoying. I mean, it just has to be the synthesizer. There's just no other. There's just no other way around it. Hopefully they didn't hit a land, I guess. Might be dead, team. These go for the thirds are bad. Well, Sentinel's getting shot for a six. That's why that card's good. And they hit a land. They opt to not go for Synthesizer? I feel like Synthesizer would have been the play, no? I can take a draw here or I can make a dude. Keeping on top. Uh, like this. Draw. Okay. Hmm. Do I offspring this or do I? I think I just play this and I play the vine last year. I don't think I really go crazy. Or maybe I activate the map and try to draw a land here. I think I try to draw a land actually. Because now another draw of this, if this doesn't hit a land is good. I'll throw that in the yard. Crack your Fable Passage. Ah, I thought they were going to do it. Did I get Fable Passage? Ooh, braiding that really good. Hey, we find land. That's pretty sick. Hey, I have some cool cards too. Uh, offspring. Now they obviously have these lined up. Upstairs. Let us get the combat here. Now they got. Oh, they let me attack. They messed up. Maybe they want to use this, I guess. But maybe it's not like a full mess up, but I mean, I think letting me make a map is kind of a mistake. Uh, yeah. It's like weird because it's like not like a full mistake, obviously, but I don't know if I fully agree. Pop this while we can. Can't make a token right now. And why the virtue is good, we can use it. Because obviously these are good, but with that said, not a great thing. Now they can activate this. You have no max hand size at the beginning of your end step draw card. This list that they're playing is super sick. The main fear that we have, team, is. Oh, stop drawing those, please. <laughs> Can I guess? Uh, the fear. Everything about this game sucks. <laughs> Let's play this for the third time. As they play the uh, card with prototype on it, for whatever reason, I can't think of what its name is. Uh, yeah. Now we can go to combat. We can attack. Because the thing is, they'll make three two twos that'll attack. And they're not activating this braided that in time. But this could be a situation where they tap a creature offensively. I'm not putting a ton of pressure on. We hope there's not a Brotherhood in, which is possible. But Brotherhood in, a little sketchy to play. Remember the card I said would suck if they played? That one. 
That one sucks. Yeah? Uh-huh. Sure. Interesting. Table passage it is. I just don't think I can necessarily get there in time. We have to no attack here. I definitely think I'm dead, but we'll see. Should be dead. Honestly, they can bounce and tap my stuff here to get exactly what they want. Um I'm actually dead here if they know how to do it. So all they have to do is not that. Um, so all they have to do is they could have cast this. If they have a land, I guess it works. They could have cast this bouncing a thing. They could tap a thing down and then they could use three steps ahead to make a copy of Braden that. And then they would be able to tap another thing down, giving me only like two blockers. don't have four mana available nine i mean this is my only chance they have a flash artifact to kill me than they do there's not a whole lot i can do i have three dead cards in my hand i have two-ish damage sure Here. Here. This is four, five, six, seven, eight. Do I have a way to live? No, because they'll battalion me again. No, I might be able to block it out. It just depends if they're smart enough with this braid and that to do it, I guess. Or they can work around a way with the braid and that to do it, I guess. We can also make a 1-1. One, one. I know we need to commit a crime here. We'll just do it on their turn. <laughs> I guess these were just good cards. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to miss the lethal somehow. I just don't know how I'd miss it. I can't get an attack in. Yeah, and there's double activate here. As long as activated abilities can't be activated, it's triggered abilities can. No. Here. Got a bounce spell. Ooh, tough. I mean, I don't think we had a chance to win this game anyway. I don't believe there's a way because they bounce this. I can only make like a 1-1. One -one. Yeah, we're dead. So we're good here. We had like a weird chance to win that game. I think if I would have hit the land naturally and been able to put the fine lasher in uh, that one turn that we kind of hesitated a bit and we put in the sentinel of the nameless city i think there if we were able to just have a land in our hand naturally i would have been able to play the vine lasher for both sides and then opted to just started pinging them because i would have got a land in early enough but i mean at the end of the day like we end up losing this will be a game i watch back and wonder if there's something i did wrong but that's also a hard matchup with three dead cards in my hand so sure and going first lately Big, big cheater boy I am. Oh no, not Mono Red again. Interesting. 
That's actually good for us because we'd much rather exile stuff. Uh, they, they're not gonna put anything in play that I have to worry about. Your monster trade it, man. Uh huh. Uh, in case they drew something, because we saw the pause there, we just let the two damage happen. Because if they monster trade something, it's significantly worse. Get rid of that. Land, please. Please. Thing that gets land. Okay. <laughs> I mean, at least we have two removal spells, I guess. I can't be super upset, but there's a hero. There's a scamp. They're like, oh, my opponent sucks at the game. Let me, uh, let me figure it out. I'm thanks can veil it or something okay I'll just get this out of the way now oh my knee just popped that did not feel great Wamp. that out of the road they have something I have no idea what it is Go for this. You do it now, cause like monster trades is only a plus one L. They did have the snake skin veil. Tower. My dad. Counting. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead, ain't I? Back. No. All right. Well, I'm close to dead apparently. At least that's how that felt. I have a dude. And he is... Honestly, opponent, if you keep flooding, I'd be pretty pumped about that. So they have a spell. I'm gonna try to get through this turn. And it's not a fling, because there wouldn't be a pause here. So it's an actual spell. Other than fling. Sure. Hopefully this manifest sucks, but who knows? Mm -hmm. We have to do this and just hope this is a really bad 2-2. But like us winning this would strictly be because they draw really, really poorly in my opinion. But we have pretty good stuff going on now. Yeah. Uh huh. Let's target a card in your graveyard. I don't even know what is good. I guess the scamp commit a crime, put this passage in play. I saw my anoint with affliction in there. Don't worry, I'm devastated. It's fine. Let's play another one of these. It's time to wall up, dude. Um, let's just crack this now. Wamp. No, we pass. We are. We are hiding behind two three threes with reach. Real bad, like. Please skip combat. That's not skipping combat. I know this trick. No! Skirt. This work. I don't think so. Yeah, because it's not exiled permanently now. I guess we still want to just thin if I can. Although, I can technically attack and gain life, but I'm at one. Alright, draw a land. Not really where I want to be. I'll grab a force. 
I have to attack, I think. Because two life is better than the three. You relax. You come back. Just random things. I have no idea. Random things. Out they block. Obviously, it's pretty big Dallas that they block. Uh, in turn. I gain three. And then I exile another creature. Honestly, we might even have to sack this. Ooh. Ooh. You don't have a way to give it haste. Shut up, dude. Oh, is this a fling scenario? Are you going to hit me with the Xaxes? Oh, no, they pass. Okay. We have a chance. I think the chance is really, really bad. And I don't actually think we necessarily have one. But we're going to pray. <laughs> sure. Not me. Not me crying in the club. How are you worded? What is creature card exile with ghost vacuum onto the battlefield under your control with a flying counter on it? Each of them is a 1 1 spirit and this is to a certain type. Activate only as a sorcery. Ah, uh, I should have done the harvester. Because it can exile from anywhere, can it? Uh, noob mistake. Not me, dude. I would never make that mistake. Shut up. I also thought the six wasn't a tap ability. Will you draw a deck card? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually win this game. That's crazy. Uh, they're going to give that double strike, which is a weird thing. Sure. My graveyard. Now I know I'm going to lose everything underneath this. My turn. Kill everything. <laughs> Negative one. Negative one. Prevail's good. No land, please. Thank you. In there. I have a flying one one. Stop me. You are stopping me, indeed. You think it's a stink skin veil? I mean, it's all I got. I, it's where I am. I have no idea what to do anymore. Team, are we winning? I have no idea. I messed up that harvester play a long time ago, but hopefully we can still grind this out. Uh, you are, you're dead. You're, I'm not cycling you. Not at three. So I, I can now sack this food and shoot this thing. So. So if it dies, yeah, interesting. Because it will die and then it can target me and then I can sack the food on target. Oh, nothing? Okay. 
All right, here we are. I don't mean that. What is your last card? It's a land, isn't it? You have a land in hand, don't you? You have a little land in play, don't you? You think you're sneaky, yeah? You think you got it figured out. But what if I tell you, I'm trying to figure it out and I'm a little lost. I, I'm in there, you know? Do I attack out? So if I attack out, this goes, right? Four, seven, eight, nine, ooh, it's 10. If I hit a land, I win. Do I have a way to target them twice? Maybe? Oh, we hit the land. So now it is lethal and they have to block. And I have the food. Do we, do we like slightly make a mistake and get out of this game? That'd be great. Yeah. Hey. Very cool. We don't sack the food in case they have a lightning strike, which they don't play. Good game. That was crazy. I need to know if that last card in your hand was a like a land or something. But wow. He messed that up a little bit. I mean, like to be fair, we obviously got a lot of mana so we can do the shenanigan plays we were doing. But yeah, I kind of just like, this is an issue of playing with a card for the first time ever. One, I forgot this could target my own graveyard. Two, I didn't realize the six mana part was tap as well. I knew it was sorcery speed, but I didn't realize it also had to tap because I thought the kind of value from it was like exile thing, pay six mana, sack it. Because realistically, that's a seven mana play if you're going to play this exile thing and do it. And obviously it gets better as you do everything else. But besides messing that up, at least we caught it during the game. But yeah, first time playing this card, not really going to be a best one card very often. So like, uh... Don't yell at me too much. But we, we won. We won, team. And honestly, if I had a loss, I'd been okay. Because we actually played a Magic the Gathering game. Uh, yeah? One. Going first. Blessed, I guess. Uh, here. Obviously a normal one. Play this. Ping my opponent. Uh, I'll just activate this now. Obviously, we're gonna go grab a swamp here. Let's go ahead and shoot him down. And all this, we don't have anything to represent. We don't have a crime to commit here. No thing put into play. We shoot. So here's the weird thing. I could play the lookout, but I think I want to play Liliana and plus. What do I get rid of? A lookout though. Or do I just play a lookout? Maybe I just play a lookout. They could have a get lost, but I could have went to combat first. I should have gone to combat first. I'm not playing into an L spell smite though. Or that. D team, now I look smart. Like one free damage, and I said no, I would have died. Ooh, that's not good. That's good though. Um, let's do Liliana here. Liliana, not good at keeping up with the caretaker's talent, but at least we can do some of this nonsense. And they won't have a token to copy with the caretaker's talent. Get in. So the best part about the Vine Lasher against this deck is we don't actually have to hit our opponent ever. So we can just slowly like generate the value we need. How does this work? Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three life. If you do return it back with finality, whenever a creature an opponent control dies, they pay three life. They don't return that card. Not good here. So it does no damage. Put a card in your graveyard. <laughs> Please. Oh, I committed the crime. I guess I'll commit more crimes anyway, right? It up. It up. Plus. 
It's each player? Ah, we get rid of that. And they really were like, we cannot reprint Me a Hook Massacre. This one? You know what song bangs? And it's what I'm listening to right now. Uh, Fireflies. Fireflies? Sick song. Uh, fear is what? Sunfall here? Yeah. Uh, I could target now, which would trigger one um, lookout, but I'll just wait till their turn. Like, I could obviously target now and trigger my one, but I would much rather opt to do both. I'll, ju I'll just wait to respawn whenever they sunfall me here. At least I think they're going to sunfall me here. That would make sense. Pizza. Yeah. Gain some life, make some dudes, draw some cards. I believe it's within your right to do so. Oh, doing that now is kind of crazy. But they're trying to protect themselves, obviously. Uh, this one. This one. We're vine lashing, fellas. We're lashing those vines. Um. Ooh. This one. Surveil? Oh, I guess surveilling doesn't matter. Because the free side trigger won't resolve first. Um, just throw that in the bin so I can kind of help guarantee this fable. So here's the thing about the fable passages though. Now I want to go for the throat this now. Um, I mean, we just got to be aggressive, right? Carrot cake. Obviously, we have this to target the Biza. Now they have to be worried. It's like we triple block. We quad blocking? Or they misclick. Misclick, I think. Yeah, I think they're three man blocking one of these lookout. No. Okay. Fair enough. Plus Lily. We'll minus Lily later. Uh, the reason we're not budging, by the way, with these Fable passages is because we want to kick a Vine Lasher later if we can. And then, like, if we ever draw one, we want to kick the Vine Lasher so we can get in there. Now, here's the problem with a Sunfall for our, our opponent. If they Sunfall us, which they obviously can't now because they played a land already, but if they were to Sunfall us, or they'd make the token, whatever, but at the same time, what would it really do for them? Get lost, make some tokens, draw some cards. Here. As long as we can commit crimes with these free stride lookouts, like, I don't care. Uh, sure. Get lost cannot target an artifact, so obviously... Honestly, with this vacuum, am I not supposed to commit it now? You think? Because I'll get the caretaker's talent, because a Lauren will enter. The battlefield demo does nothing so we just grab another cottage fine lasher shoot again because the thing is as the warrant enters and i blow up his caretaker's talent now like what does my opponent do they have no more card draw right ah uh, two vine lasher's going to the bottom i might end up having to pop one of these fable passages just to shuffle but i mean i'm about to look through another 10 cards ish yeah that that needed to happen probably a while ago these things are really good uh, my turn. I land off the top. I'm not gonna lie. A little whack. But. Let's figure out what we got on top. A land. Not good. 
Okay. My opponent leaves because my value is too high. All right, everyone. Here we are. This is the final list that I ended up settling on playing. I kind of looked at a challenge list that did well, as you can see the sideboard here. Um, there was a copy of Anoint in this sideboard. But I ended up making some changes overall because the way the meta is so curved into mono red, I felt Anoint was better than an extra copy of Cut Down and an extra copy of Go Forth. Actually, no, there was two of these in the main. I cut one of these for an Anoint and a Go for the Throat for the Anoint because we obviously know how strong mono red is and Anoint's incredible at doing that. Also, the Hottie Gym piles just actually exiles that creature so they can't helping hand the thing back. And the other change I made is I trimmed one Cut Down for a Disfigure. For that minus two minus two hopefully when it's good just to kind of serve the same purpose as it does um like an anoint where i can kill a creature for one mana and it doesn't necessarily exile but i'll take less damage but realistically that might not even be needed because we do have so many harvesters and virtues which is nice but we also have a very cool like top end game winner because of apparently like i was a little skeptical on this i was like man it's a lot and it doesn't really do anything and it's both players but as you saw how much mana we made off the free stride lookout, I don't think it matters, right? Because whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, they pay through life. If they don't return that card, like under our control, and whenever a creature we control dies, we can pay through life. If we do return it back with, like we can return ours back if we want. Realistically, we'll just turn like a uh, lookout or something back or like a sentinel, things like that. We're not going to return a ton because we also don't care if Mosswoods die because if they die... We'll just cycle them later so it doesn't really matter that much but yeah this deck felt great it honestly i'm surprised <laughs> like i was the landfall deck version that we played in the past was a little bit slow or felt slow and it kind of was like yeah my opponent's just going over the top of me all the time but those strategies aren't necessarily as valid right now and golgari felt really good playing this list out so the sideboard will be here if you want it obviously i you can go back to like uh, the vacuum in the main and the four go for the throats and then you cut the anoints if you're playing best of three That's the list also put your cut down back in But I actually enjoyed this kind of variation a lot and also having the anoints almost helped us in that artifact deck as you saw Three go for the throats only in the deck We had all three in our hand when we lost that game If there was another anoint in that hand I might have been able to scrape it out by taking less damage on a following turn But who knows outside of that that's it for me. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.